Digital and consistent giving has never been easier. It's as easy as sending a text from your phone. Simply pull out your phone and text the word GIVE to 605-299-8374. It's as simple as that. Thanks for helping us make a lasting impact in the Black Hills. Digital and consistent giving has never been easier. It's as easy as sending a text from your phone. Simply pull out your phone and text the word GIVE to 605-299-8374. It's as simple as that. Thanks for helping us make a lasting impact in the Black Hills. Hello, I want to welcome you to our church online. At Fountain Springs, we believe that anyone and everyone matters. And our mission is to show people who Jesus is, wherever they are. We have a community of people that are meeting all over the world, watching exactly the same service at the same time and here's the best part, experiencing God together. So no matter where you are today, no matter what you're walking through in life, hear me, you are not alone. Church is coming to you and we are excited that you have joined us. As you get ready for our online experience, I just wanna walk you through just some quick rundowns of what to expect. So here's what it's gonna start off with. It's gonna be some amazing music. And then you'll get to hear and and we'll share about what God is doing in the life of our church. And then lastly, you'll hear a message from one of our pastors. Now, throughout this next hour, our hope is that you'll encounter God, experience life change, and find community. You may have some preconceived notions about online church, but church gatherings, no matter where they happen, are still about people. To get the full community experience, be sure to participate in our chat section. This is an opportunity for you to build relationships with people here locally and around the world, and you can share your questions, praises, or if you're willing to be vulnerable, your struggles in life. But thank you so much for joining us today, and we are all better when we live life together.
Well, hey guys, welcome to Fountain Springs. We are so excited you are with us today. I'd like to take this time to introduce one of my new friends to you. His name is Cal. He's joined us on staff here at the church as a worship pastor, and we're so excited to have him with us. Um, let me go ahead and pray for us, and we'll sing some songs together. Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to, to come together and, and sing songs to you. And God, I pray that wherever we are today, um, physically and spiritually, God, that, that you will meet us. God, I pray that um, you would be close to us, that we would feel your presence, and that we would feel your love and your grace for us. God, we thank you so much for who you are, and we ask these things in your name. Amen.
song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, the name above.
with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Amen. What did a uh What an amazing thing to sing together that that we declare that our God is holy. There is no one like him. I think so often in my life, I try to put myself in the songs that we sing. Or I try to put um, a situation that I'm in into the song that we sing. And I find that oftentimes the best way to connect with God is to remove myself from it, remove my problems from it, set those aside for the moment and just focus in on on who God is, that he's holy and that there's no one beside him. Um, Cal, that's a song that you're pretty familiar with and uh, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on it. Yeah, this is uh, a really cool song because, you know, in the beginning we sing, um, you know, you are worthy of my highest praise. You are worthy of every song I could sing, every breath I breathe. Um, But then in the chorus, we get the opportunity to actually sing that out, and we sing, holy, there's no one like you. Um, And it's it's just cool because we can talk about who God is, but also respond to that as well. And even in the bridge, we sing that, um, I will build my life upon your love, and I I won't fear because my trust is in you alone. And it it just, um, the lyrics kind of embody uh, what we're called to do. Um, so yeah, this has always been pretty, a pretty special song to me. Um, I've really connected with God through this many times. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Josh, Heidi, you guys have any thoughts or any takeaways from it? I like how it talks about building in that foundation and, um, you know, going to him daily and just how he just keeps building us and building us. You'll read a scripture over and over again and something completely new will pop out and you've read it a billion times and, and how he's just revealing himself to you more and more every day and, and, uh, and that you're just really building in that firm foundation, especially in a time like this where everything's so different than, than what we know, mm-hmm. which is not necessarily a, a bad thing, but uh, to have that firm foundation that underlying peace um, all the time is is just crucial. And I think uh, what what the whole world is going through now is just such a great time to just just to to remember and to pour upon uh, just that that foundation that is just always keeping us grounded mm-hmm. when everything else is shaken. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think it's, I echo what Heidi's saying and. It makes me think and ask myself, what am I building my life upon? Is it my own accomplishments? Is it my own skills? Is it uh, my retirement? Is it uh, relationships? Is it status? Um, as we've seen, things that we built our lives upon can be taken away so quickly. And uh, yeah, just what is that foundation that we're, we're building on? And uh, for me, uh, this song helps me reflect on that and put my, my heart in the right place, I feel like. Mm-hmm. I think it's a beautiful and terrible thing how quickly um, everybody's life has changed. In, in one way or another, everything that we know as, as normal uh, has shifted away. But at the same time, I think that when everything else kind of falls away is when we really see where our foundation is. And when we've built our lives and we've built our foundation on, on our God, um, we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to to have this fear because we know where our hope comes from, right? We, we can think of things, like David said a couple weeks ago, with, with an eternal perspective rather than a momentary perspective. Um, yeah, it's an amazing thing. So cool. Uh, let's keep singing. You unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone and I'm no longer a slave to fear but I am a child
your family Your blood floats through my veins And I'm no longer a slave to fear But I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear But I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear But I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear But I am a child of I don't know about you, uh, in the middle of all of everything that's been going on, I have moments where there are times I'm just self-evaluating, maybe a little too much, and I don't know if you get like that or not. Uh, we have moments where we just kind of take stock and take inventory of, of the things that we're doing and the way in which we're doing them, or, or maybe it's the things that we're not doing. And for me, that's been the case. Uh, I, I drive by something or I'm, I'm sitting and thinking and I'm like, hey, I should do that. That should be a part of what I do. And then uh, if I don't follow through with it, Man, there are moments I just get frustrated with myself and, and I have to stop and be like, okay, what do I need to do to take that next step to get back to where I wanna be? And I'm thankful for those moments of, of like just the song that we sang of that I am a child of God. And, and those are things I don't have to self-evaluate a lot about, but it's those things that I believe maybe God is putting on our hearts to do, to engage in a way that can be powerful. And specifically one for me lately has been prayer walking. and. If you're not familiar with it, it's the idea of walking around a neighborhood or a certain area and spending time specifically in prayer about certain places or just the area in general, lifting those individuals, those families, maybe schools or businesses up to God, asking him uh, to be seen in their lives, asking him to, to have them know of his presence and, and his power and, and just taking time to thank him for the people that you know or that you come in contact with. And listen, we live in an amazing place in the Black Hills, and there are a lot of places to take walks. And many of you engage walking in, in nature and connect with God. But might I challenge you in a way of saying, what would it look like to begin doing that around your neighborhood? Maybe even sharing responsibility with friends, saying, hey, why don't you come over to my neighborhood and, and let's walk around and, and pray, like specifically for mine. I could pray for Horse Man School, and I could pray for the activities at the pool or, or some of the park areas in my neighborhood around also my neighbors that, that I've come to know even more so in the time that I've been there. I was challenged this last weekend with Pastor Nicholas's message. And, and there was a verse I was reading the other day out of Ephesians 3.17. And it just ends up talking from the idea of, listen, let your roots grow down deep into the love of God. And, and I think 
as I, as I did that self-reflection, as I did that, that, that conversation in my head, what a powerful moment it was to realize that, that if I'm immersing myself into God's love, He's encouraging me, He's challenging me, He's calling me to things to say, hey, would you be willing to begin walking and praying for your neighbors and praying for your community in, in a more powerful way so that they would see God in you and that they would maybe even come to know God in a more powerful way in their lives? Hey, I just wanna take a moment and pray with you. Would you join me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much for just coming into your presence in prayer. And, and we believe prayer is a powerful thing because it connects with you and it connects us with you. And so I just thank you right now uh, for my neighbors. I thank you for my neighborhood and for the people that, that I come to you regularly with in prayer and ask that you would be in their lives. I, I pray that we would be challenged to begin praying for our neighbors and our neighborhood and for the places in and around us that God would be seen in our lives, but that we would have moments to connect and be challenged to connect with others through you and in you. God, help our roots grow deep and help us find uh, newer connections with you in diving into who you are. We love you, God, and ask this in your name. Amen. At this point in our service, we would love for you to join us in worship through giving. God is the ultimate giver who gave us the most precious gift imaginable. When we live generously, it changes us from the inside out, making us more like Him. Would you join with us as we give and all strive to be more generous people? We've made this process easy. All you have to do is text the word GIVE to 605-299-8374. Then put in the dollar amount and answer a couple of questions. If you would prefer to give in a different way, please go to give.fs.church and find the method you prefer. When you give, it makes a profound difference in the world God has created. Here at Fountain Springs, we believe in the next generation. We want you to know that we've made it easy for your kids to engage in a service that meets them at their level. There are three easy steps to take to access these services. Step one, download our app, launch your preferred app store and search for Fountain Springs Church. Step two, once you find it, download and open the app. Step three, on the front page, you will see an icon titled Kid Services. Just touch that image and pick the service for your appropriate age group. We have a service designed for preschool kids and a service designed for elementary kids. It's as easy as that. We hope your kids enjoy. I hope you've been tuning in and listening to this series that, that we've been looking at major things in your life that, that, uh, Go after control. If, you, if you're like, I'm a control freak, right? I, I love control. If that's you, uh, but, but maybe you've missed some of these, these weeks that we've talked about, what's kind of grabbing for our control. I, I want to review. Let's review together. And, and if you missed any of this, by the way, uh, you can go, on, go just go find it and you can watch it and all that. But here, if, if eternity versus the temporary, if the temporary has like your brain right now, trying to make you like, I want to be in control. I feel like I, I don't have control in the midst of all that's going on. Uh, we talked about how to, how to wrestle with that margin. If you have no margin, no, no time, you feel, you feel like crazy out of control. Uh, if you don't have the character to withstand life, if, if right now you're trying to hide secrets, right? If you've got things that are private and you're working hard that no one finds out and it's, uh, that can make life just feel flat out well, out of control. Relationships, if you have no community, no, if you don't have the people in your life that are encouraging you and challenging you, well, then it's hard to feel like you have any control in life because you don't have the people there to support and, and sharpen and, and sometimes even carry you. We talked about how just flat out waiting, just waiting for life to play out or, or waiting for an answer on something can make you feel out of control. This list is incomplete. You know this, we've talked a lot about this being there's six. According to the Bible, 
according to God himself, according to psychologists, according to, if you just think about it, there's one more remaining thing that, that can be so divisive because of how it makes us feel like we're in control. It makes us feel like we've got something or, or the opposite. If, if, if you don't have it in your life, you feel like you have no control. It's been proven to divide marriages, to tear apart families and disagreements. It's proven to keep us up late at night. It's proven to cause much, much, much strain money. According to all of the professionals, according to God himself, that the conversation about money and finances and do we have it or do we not have it makes us feel in control or sometimes out of control. And what a time in the midst of a pandemic. Where? Come on. I know some of us have lost our jobs, right? Us, our family, right? Maybe, maybe you don't have the same hours that you had. Maybe your pay got decreased. Maybe if you're a business owner, the profits are not looking like what they used to look or what you projected. Maybe you had something, money put into something and the investments just imploded. Or maybe not even around this pandemic, you just have always struggled with money in the sense of it being in complete control. I remember, let me tell you a story. When I was a kid, uh, I, I, I won a gift card. Uh, and the gift card hmm, was the Toys R Us. Now, I gotta, let me help you understand. See, some of us are like, Toys R Us, what, what is that? What is that, David? I don't know what Toys R Us is. Well, <clears throat> here. Toys R Us, as a child, was where God lived. I mean, it was heaven. It was the greatest place. It was, if you couldn't afford to go to Disney World, you could at least afford to walk around Toys R Us. I want a gift card to Toys R Us. And I remember as a kid, I got this gift card. I think it might have been for, for maybe 50 bucks. I don't even remember. It's 50 bucks. But, but I remember walking into Toys R Us and, and feeling this sense of, of absolute, I am in control. Like where it was like, you know what? I own this store. I own the store. I remember going in. I'm, I'm just a little kid. Just a little kid. But I had this gift card, and I was going in. My, my dad was with me, and we were going we, we to pick what I could buy with the gift card. I remember walking in and seeing the employees basically going, yeah, I mean, you, you pretty much work for me. I'm, I'm in control. Like, this is, my, this is my place now. And I walked in and went aisle by aisle by aisle by aisle. And, and I finally found what I wanted. It was this cool racetrack thing. And, and I remember feeling like, like, well, I can tell you now. I can reflect back. Just think about that. I'm not a little kid anymore. I remember the moment I can visualize walking down the aisles. I felt like life was right in control. I'd love to tell you that I grew out of that, that idea that if I had enough money or money for things that I wanted, that, that life seemed right and good and, and sustainable. But I got to tell you, even as an adult, I still wrestle with that. And I think you might too. Where, uh, where if it's good financially... You're like, we're good. I'm, 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 all things are good. If it's tight financially, uh, if something breaks, and you're like, I don't know how to, do you see what it begins to do to us where we begin based on the amount of money in our accounts, based on how well everything is working in our homes, how well our cars, go, we begin to think we're in control based on how all that is. At the beginning of the series, I shared a verse with you. Uh, let me read this to you just again. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and, and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. We talked about this. We talked about it. And I don't want to belabor this. Now, what I want to show you is about 60 seconds later, Jesus says something else. No one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other. If, you, if you've ever had this at work, you're like, mm -hmm. yep. For you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. I want to talk to you about this word. Because as you and I read this word, we're not getting the full glimpse of what this means. You can't serve God and money. Well, 
let, let me show you the original word that's actually there, mammon. Mamonas, not mamoas, by the way. Uh, but this word here, it's talking about wealth, riches, and money. But let's go, let's go further than this. Uh, in ancient days, the Assyrians had a, uh, what's called a spirit. Uh, 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 they had this, this thing, this, this person that they worshipped, the spirit of mammon. It was this, they worshipped this, this idea that if you worship this, this entity, that you would have all that you would ever need. Uh, wealth, riches, not just not just dollars, not just numbers, but, but that everything around you uh, resource-wise would work and you would have all that you would ever dream of. Man, it's, it's a spirit. Now, now, I want you to pay attention to what, what Jesus is saying. He's, he's bringing up that, that you and I can actually be loyal to someone other than him, to something that promises uh, riches and, and money, now, now, here's a thing. Come on. Uh, at least a lot of us have grown up in a setting where when we talk about money, we get offended. Maybe you already are right now. You're like, oh, I bet this is a sermon where the, where the pastor's going to say, hey, I, 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 I got to give him money. No, 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 no. We're talking about what makes us feel in control. And some of us have already looked in. Yep, see, that's why. All, all rich people. They're bad, right? That's what some of us think. That's what, maybe you're raised that way. Maybe that's your political stance that you're like, rich is bad, rich is bad. And, and I, wanna, I wanna bring up something that I think is important here. God doesn't have a problem with people having money. I, I, this can seem so like basic, but it's not. I think when you and I are building like, who's truly in control in life? Well, we begin to throw things out that I'm not sure we, fully mean. Let me, let me show you just one example in the Bible. Abram, you might know him as Abraham. Later on, God changes his name, but, but God loves this guy. He even establishes a covenant with him, a major promise with him. Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. So just for a second, if you, if you read the Bible and test me on this, by all means, go read the Bible and read all about this, where, where you're going to see how much uh, God supports Abram, um, encourages Abram, leads Abram, all the while, he's rich. I think it's important to have this conversation where we, we acknowledge that uh, God doesn't hate rich people. God isn't against money. Some of us even misquote a, a verse in the Bible where we say the root of all evil is money. No, no it's not. It's the love of it. And, and that's why I would change the words here. God has a problem with money having people, not people having money. I'm not trying to be tone deaf by doing a sermon on money in the midst of a pandemic. Actually, the opposite. One of my major concerns right now is that you and I won't talk about what we should talk about. And that's that if... if our jobs aren't paying what they should or we got laid off or whatever, whatever you're doing financially is that we won't talk about it even though it's eating at us. And here, here's what God is saying. Here's, here's what Jesus laid out here. Now, it's, it's very possible for money to rule your life instead of God. It's so possible to be loyal, listen, to whatever's in your bank account whatever's running correctly, whatever isn't broken. And maybe in this pandemic, you and I shouldn't be afraid to talk about this. It's possible for money to rule your life, for you and I to be loyal to the spirit of mammon. It's dangerous. I don't think that's what you want. In fact, let's, let's take apart this verse again. That, let's go back. You, you cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. You can't, you can't serve God and, and money, but you cannot. Like, pay attention to what he's saying. He's saying you can't. Listen, how does it feel if I, right now if I said, you, you can't go outside. You, you can't do whatever. Think about what you want to do right now. Just think right now, but just for a second, 
You can even, right now, you, you can put it in the comments. What's one thing you want to do right now? If you're watching on TV, just tell someone nearby. But if you, what you want right now, right now, what do you, just one thing, if you just could do it, and now I'm going to tell you, you can't. How's that feel? All warm and fuzzy? No. <laughs> Sounds miserable. Uh, but Jesus just said it. You cannot serve God as your provider and also treat someone else or something else like it's your provider. If you'll give me freedom, I'd like to take some right now. Here's what's being said in the Bible. God isn't a side hustle. Now, okay. If side hustle would be like this extra, this, this not, not everything, not sold, not number one, just like this, this extra thing. And, and nowadays, maybe some of you right now, your side hustle isn't doing so hot in the midst of all that's going on. Uh, God isn't a side hustle. When you, look, when you look at, okay, what, what's, what's, what's giving me a sense of peace in life and what's, what's helping me live life and enjoy life and, and thrive in life, what Jesus brings up and puts on the table, if you're new to the Bible, you're like, you know, you're reading these verses about, about mammon and, and, and this other language and what's going on. Here's what he's saying. God is in a side hustle. He's not an alternative source of revenue. He's, he's not like, well, you know, I'm going to take care of the main stuff, and, and if, if anything extra comes in, I'm just going to say, oh, look, look, God blessed me. Hashtag blessed. No. God is the number one provider, your number one provider. God is your source of whatever you need. In fact, many times we think about only God provides, God provides, and we lump it into the blessing part in the sense of the, the extra, the, what we didn't expect or, or, or what we were hoping for, but we didn't plan on it, where you and I treat ourselves as, hey, I'm my provider, I go to my job. But li li listen, if you're breathing, that's a blessing. And if you right now say, I am a follower of Jesus Christ, I am a Christian, I am all about God, let me bring up something that Jesus actually already brought up. God isn't a side hustle. And when it comes to money and finances and wealth and riches and just provision in general, stop treating God like he's maybe extra and you'll go to him maybe if you're desperate. No, he's your number one provider. I think one of the core lessons in this is for us to lean into that. I'm not trying to be insensitive about talking about money, but I think it's where you and I are at. God isn't a side hustle. So let me, let me lead us with a question here. So, so how do I live? How do I live like, like God is my provider? Like how do I even live that way? Because we can say, well, it says that in the Bible, okay, so, okay, we know God created all, he started all, okay, okay, we, we know that, but can we just admit, come on, I, okay, I'll admit it for us. Sometimes it's difficult to take what you, what you believe and transfer it over to actual real life decision making to your behavior. So how, how do I do that? Well, in short, here, uh, learn God's rhythm. Rhythm is a big, big deal. Uh, I want to invite my son to come, come help us with that. And as he comes in, uh, if, if you've ever learned uh, an instrument of any sort, oftentimes the teacher is going to bring up what's called a metronome. Um, here. Yep. Is that sparking a little bit of, yeah. You getting annoyed yet? Uh, the design of this is that, is that, especially as a new musician, but as, as you're learning, that you would follow a certain rhythm. You don't get to determine the rhythm or, or, or it's gonna sound maybe horrific. Uh, it, it's that, that you would follow the right rhythm. And many of us, as we're, as we're learning and, and living life, especially with, when it comes to money, we're, we're trying to figure out like different rhythms. And, and I think this is a good lesson. So, so my son, our, our son Hayden, he's our oldest. He, one day, and I've shared this many times, he wanted to learn how to play drums. And so, He's had a couple of drum teachers and they would talk about how, how we need to basically apply the metronome and, and teach the rhythm so that it doesn't sound like just a bunch of drums being hit at random times. And so Hayden has, when he plays drums in his ears, as he learned, uh, what we call a click track. He's got earbuds in his ears 
and, and he's got a click track, and he's listening to a, a beat that's keeping him on beat. In fact, here, let's have some fun. Come on. Let's take a little, uh, little information break, and let's just enjoy. Uh, Hayden, I'm going to give you space. Drum away, my son. Drum away. Well done. Well done. Thank you, man. Proud of you. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm going to sit down to the drums. I'm just kidding. Actually, I'm not going to sit down to the drums at, at all uh, because it wouldn't sound like that. See, see what, what Hayden has learned is, is that there is a rhythm, there is a pace that if he were to adopt that and put that into his ears, he can make certain decisions at the right time. You need to learn God's rhythm when it comes to money. Maybe no one's ever taught it to you. But before, before I share it with you, because maybe you do know it, maybe you've never heard, okay, so if I don't want money to be in control of my life, if I want to have peace no matter what's in my bank account or not, like how do I play this out? How do I learn God's rhythm? Well, let me show you the, the normal uh, rhythm that God doesn't teach it. Uh, here, th- this is it. This is what we do first. First, you, you spend. You just maybe call it bills or, or, or wants or whatever, but, but you, the first thing you do with a, a paycheck is you start to slide it off to um, landlord or, or mortgage, uh, groceries, uh, JR's barbecue, uh, JR's barbecue, uh, Amazon, JR's barbecue. Okay, anyways, so you, you just spend first. And this is normal rhythm. This is normal. This is what uh, commercials will teach you. This is what society will teach you. This might even be what your friends or your parents modeled for you. I, I don't know. But first is you, you spend. Then if, if, if you have any extra, second, you plan for your future and you, and you save a little bit. Just a little bit, but you save. And then if you have, after you've put some into savings, the last thing you do is you, you give to God. Remember God said that, that we serve him or, or the spirit of mammon, one or the other. This is the northern normal rhythm. This is what we normally do. Now, I think it's important for me to share some basics with you. When it comes to how well we do rhythms, most of us don't get past the first. In fact, here's a statistic that is alarming, and, and from what I understand, this statistic is even pre-pandemic. 78% live paycheck to paycheck. Maybe that's you. I'm not hating on you at all. All I'm trying to show you is a little bit of proof that the majority of people don't even get past the first one into saving or giving. Then you can really, uh, really nerd out for a while, and I can show you that uh, most of us are struggling with giving to anything or anyone. Right now, if you don't have a job, if the income's not been what it should be, you're like, give? give? Are you kidding me? And save? And there's no way. I'm, I'm eating up my savings right now just to survive. I get it. But we as a church are leaning into what will, what will the new look like? What, how will I live my life? Even, it, it, I may have not lived my life as I should have, but how, how will I? And what's proven now is the majority of Americans, seven out of ten actually say they're great at giving. The IRS and what we report on our taxes indicate actually the opposite, that we aren't great. Here's the dangers of living this rhythm of of life. Uh, Our spending is is reckless. Our saving is absolutely random, like completely random. And giving is absolutely incredibly just rare. Okay, I told you I would tell you God's rhythm. God's rhythm of, of how to make sure that finances, money, the spirit of mammon doesn't rule your life, that God rules your life. How, how do you make sure that you are loyal to God and not the mortgage company kind of stuff? Like, how, how do you do that? Well, uh, the Bible tells us, reverse the order. First, we give to God. Uh, here's, let me just, so, this, just so you know this isn't me, but honor the Lord with your wealth. With the first fruits of all your crops. 
if, if you're new to this, first fruits, it's, it's saying that the first, when, when, you, when you get a paycheck, when you make some money, even if a birthday card and, and a check comes, and uh, the, the method, God's rhythm, it may not be your, maybe if right now you're, you're refuting this thing. No, no way. No, God's rhythm is that the first thing you do with any money is that you give a portion of that back to him. That's the first thing. Before you go to the grocery store, before you pay your mortgage, before you do other things, I'm not getting legalistic with you. I'm just showing you a rhythm of life. This is what God's rhythm is. He says this is the best rhythm so that you aren't living under the control of money. First is God. You give to God. Second, you save a little bit. Here, the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. They spend it all. And right now, you're, some of you, are, I don't make enough to save. What if you, what if you didn't put numbers to it that were grand? What if, what if this week you saved one dollar? I'm serious. I'm not joking. What if this week you saved one dollar, and then next week maybe you save two dollars? If you'd like to, uh, maybe after the message, Google the savings plan. It's brilliant. Where each week you increase by a dollar. By the end of the year, you'll have over a thousand dollar emergency savings in your savings. This is God's rhythm. Give to him first, save, and then you know where I'm going. Last, then we deal with now. Wise people think before they act. Fools don't and even brag about their foolishness. Wise people think before they act. Have you ever considered that what if you and I had a budget that actually would map this out and that we would decide where our money was going to go before we actually let the money go that way? Let me lean in, okay? What does this conversation about money and mammon really get after here? Uh, When we feel powerless, we compromise, don't we? I know I'm tempted to. When, When we feel powerless, and is it not the absence of income that can make you feel so extremely powerless? If that's where you are right now, if, if of all this whole list of six things that we as a church have leaned into, if, if money and resources, income and hours and investments and business plans, if, if you're just feeling absolutely, utterly powerless, you're in danger of compromising what you know is true. So I want to sum up the whole series and lean into a I'll call it a, a, a revision. It, it's still true, but it's, it's almost like a paraphrase of something the Bible says that helps us land somewhere very significantly. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. Now watch this, this is big. The real action comes next. The real action comes next. The main character in this drama, the main character, remember this, the main character in this drama. Have you ever called life drama? Uh, I have. Uh, the main character in this drama, Compared to him, I'm a mere stagehand. Will ignite the kingdom life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out, the the main character. In this pandemic, who's been the main character in your life? Okay, now let's move forward. Who are you gonna make the main character now? I urge you with everything I can, Whatever has a fight against you trying to get control, let God be the main character. He is the best main character there is. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we love you, and we ask, Lord, that you would lead us in this season. Lord, without hesitation, we, we bow before you and say you are the great provider. Lord, I pray specifically for those who have lost income, it's dwindled, it's gone away, who have lost investments, who businesses, they don't know if they're gonna even be in existence anymore. Lord, would you step in and provide and care for and lead? God, we love you, we trust you, we submit to you, the great provider, amen. so grateful for Pastor David's message today. Just the opportunity for us to be challenged with the reality of what rhythms look like in our life. That's what impacted me in such a great way. Uh, Realizing that when my rhythms are out of place and out of whack, I need to have that conversation of what it looks like to say, hey, where where is Jesus at in the midst of my life? 
uh, in the midst of all those different areas, but specifically with generosity. And seeing God work and move in my life in so many different areas, uh, it is just a powerful reminder that when he's the main character, things begin to make more sense. And so I don't know how you connected with that today. I, I'm grateful that you uh, took time to be here and be connected with us. Listen, we don't take it lightly. We love getting to spend time with you. And I would encourage you maybe right now, like to get on connect.fs.church and let us know that you're here. And we would love to connect with you in that way. Maybe you want to share a praise or a prayer request. Let us know how we can be praying with you and for you. But we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Children and the children and the children.
We thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Digital and consistent giving has never been easier. It's as easy as sending a text from your phone. Simply pull out your phone and text the word GIVE to 605-299-8374. It's as simple as that. Thanks for helping us make a lasting impact in the Black Hills. Here at Fountain Springs, we believe in the next generation. We want you to know that we've made it easy for your kids to engage in a service that meets them at their level. There are three easy steps to take to access these services. Step one, download our app, launch your preferred app store and search for Fountain Springs Church. Step two, once you find it, download and open the app. Step three, on the front page, you will see an icon titled Kid Services. Just touch that image and pick the service for your appropriate age group. We have a service designed for preschool kids and a service designed for elementary kids. It's as easy as that. We hope your kids enjoy.